When I became 11, I had a really bad acne problem, super bad. I mean, the reality of it is, based on the studies that I, I did, it's really that good-looking people have an advantage. So my face became as big as a plate, like double the size of this. I remember coming out on ABS, I had an interview, and the director had to come down and say, what happened to your face? You know, it was very painful for me to to be always criticized. Yeah. And so many rumors told about me that are untrue. You're so into beauty, you're so shallow, you're so vain, whatever. Yeah. I said, no, 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 no. You know what I'm doing? I said, I'm equalizing the world. What do you find beautiful about yourself? The honest truth is... So what is your next move? For today's episode, we will be talking to a pioneer in the beauty and medical industry in the Philippines. As the founder, president, and medical director of Bello Medical Group, she has democratized beauty standards and is considered as one of the most trusted names in skincare and cosmetic surgery. Let's learn about the journey of this multi-awarded doctor, entrepreneur, philanthropist, media personality, and fashion lover, Dr. Vicky Bello. Hi, Hi Vicky. <laughs> Welcome. So happy to be here. Thank you for... Yeah, um, I know. I'm so thrilled, Daman. I'm one of the first now. Yay. I like to be first all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're very busy, but, you know, thank you for accommodating us. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to be talking to you today because um, we have a lot of history and oh, oh, there's a lot of ground to cover, you know, and I wanted to take this opportunity also to congratulate you because... Bella is 33 years old. I know, right? <laughs> I didn't want to announce that. But then somebody convinced me that yeah. I should tell people how experienced we are. Yeah. Because, of course, you can only... by Experience is the best teacher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's Agreed. why we're the best. Now. Yeah. Okay, so I admit. Because I like to pretend I'm young, but no more now. <laughs> so I wanted to start off our conversation by, you know, maybe starting with your origin story. Mm. Okay. So I wanted to ask you growing up, who did you admire when it comes to beauty? Who else would my mom okay. and my dad? Yeah. So actually, I didn't really have... It's not like today and the artists are everywhere. I never had that. Mm -hmm. My dad is really the vain one in the family. So he would always, you know, talk to me about beauty, show me art, etc., etc. My mom, the man, is so fashion fashionable. Her waist was like 19. And whenever oh, wow. I looked at her with her perfume and she always loved Dior so she would always wear Dior when I became 11 I had a really bad acne problem super bad to the point that they always say ano pimples na tinubuan ng mukha so it was that bad it was really bad and I yeah. had already lost weight because my dad at 7 years old he stopped me you know, from eating rice can you imagine at 7? at 7 so I don't eat rice okay and then I couldn't drink soft drinks but I could eat all the sweets I wanted. The sweets are anyway, okay. allowed. Yeah. So when I was 11, I kept going to the derma over and over again every week. At that time, yung derma, ganito lang yan. You go there, alcohol, and then they prick your pimples. Yeah, extract. And then they extract it. They'd leave all the black ends and white ends behind because they don't have time. I would wait in their office for two hours because there were very few of them. And my dad would pay a lot of money. So I was medyo pikuan. So I said, so when I'd be waiting there for two hours, I'd say, I think I'll be a derma because they weren't curing me. Eh? Yeah. I kept getting pimples every week. They give acne astringent. Next week, gano na naman. So I said, I'm going to find a cure for pimples. I'm going to be a doctor dermatologist. I'm going, you know, and then I, I'd look at their table, their office, panget. I'll go, ay nako, if I'm going to be a derma, magandang aking office. Yeah. Plastic flowers on the table? No, 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 no. It has to be fresh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Magazines, punit punit, six months ago yung issue. Yeah. Time magazine, yeah. six months. No, only fashion magazines and beauty. Ma so may plan na ako, yeah. even at 11 even or 12. Back then. Yeah, so I really had, you know, people have, I don't know when they're supposed to know what they're going to do, but I already knew what my purpose was. But like, it's amazing um, when you talk about your experiences that, you know, it sort of motivated you to also seek for answers or even the cure, you said. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that became the pillar for, you know, like maybe even um, building your brand now. Yeah, well, the brand. Okay, so the brand, another story of my dad. I tell you, it's so nice to be an only child, honestly. 
So when I was 11 years old, so people always tell me, you're such a marketeer. How did you learn to build your Bello brand? Yeah. So the story of Bello brand is my dad one day came home and he was, I was 11 years old. And he said, Iha, can you do me a favor? You know, I'm a daddy's girl, both, but really more uh, until like dad, 13, yeah. I was a daddy's girl. Then I became a mommy's girl. But I said, sure, daddy, what can I do for you? He goes, can you please help make our name famous? I said, why? <laughs> he goes, because yeah, I'm so tired of people spelling our name wrong. Okay. And I, I said, what do you mean? He goes, everybody spells our name B-E-L-L-O. Don't they get it? It's just B-E-L-O. B-E-L-L-O is Bello. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll make it famous. So one of my problems was the weight problem. So when I got married to Atom, we went to Chicago. I tell you, God, I feel he, he designed my life. We were in Chicago. It was the first year of aerobics. Aerobics. It was invented in Chicago. In Chicago. Okay. So I took the, the teacher's course because mm -hmm. I said before that, exercise was tinky tinky talks, <laughs> gymnastics, diba, with yeah. the piano. Then here you have all the music, MTV was starting. Yeah, at that I time. thought it was so exciting. I learned to be a teacher. I even went to Jane Fonda to study. Oh, wow. So by the time I came back, I was second year medicine. I took a year off. By the time I got back, yeah, and I started aerobics. I think together, I have to say with Vivian Zapata, Sabay kami. Mm -hmm. And we started, I taught in Polo Club, I taught in Makati Sports, I taught in Hot Legs, I taught in Wait, Olympia. Taught yeah, I was really a teacher because I don't want to be a... Other thing you have to know about me is I need to always figure out how to make money in anything I do. <laughs> You're really but a if business it's not, woman. I'm really an entrepreneur ever since I was yeah. young. But if I'm going to do anything, like I love to make cupcakes yeah. and cookies because I eat it. But I also sell it. So yeah. There has make to be money. a business side. But always. it's my... No, I enjoy yeah. the the exchange. I'll give you a cupcake. You give me money, and then I'll buy. <laughs> it's not so. I didn't really think of it as making money, but parang must enjoy it. Like if I'm going to work out. First of all, I was the only aerobic instructor. We were so we were only two, right? Secondly, I need to exercise at a high level. I notice if I do it by myself, it's tamad tamad, di ba? Mm -hmm. But if I'm teaching. I have to do it at 150% so that my students will be at 100. And to be in that place where I'm shouting, come on, baby, get your legs up, come on. <laughs> yeah. So parang, I got so annoyed. Then my classes were so puno. I only had one class a day because I was in med school. But I had a 200 waiting list. Wow. Right? Ah, so I was yeah. earning like 60000 a month in 1980. Mm -hmm. So that's like a lot of money yeah, at that time. And then ang yabang mm -hmm. ko pa kasi... Kunyara, tamad, tamad ka, Piwi, I don't think this class is for you. So you cut So them. please leave because there are many people waiting. <laughs> oh, tara, wow. eh, but I think that's where I got my direct. <laughs> Your direct. Anyway, or... so that was my, I know I was teaching. This is why there was a lot of rumors when I became a doctor because I was doing it while I was studying. She's not a man a doctor. She's only an aerobic instructor. instructor. And okay. a lot of my patients now, you know, you were my aerobic instructor. <laughs> I, I didn't know that about you. Oh, see? Yeah. You discover new things yeah, about me I every day. I know. It's amazing, like, your story when you, you talk about that. Because, like, I feel like people think they know you, but apparently you have these experiences in the past that also help to mold you. You know why? Like, at 66, when I am this old, I look back at my life and I see all the connect the dots. Mm. The reason I'm so good, I think, in liposuction is because, like, fat is really my enemy. Because I was <laughs> five years old, enemy. Yeah. And then when I taught aerobics... I saw so many people and different body types. types yeah. And it would always fascinate me that no matter how hard they worked out, they couldn't get rid of certain areas, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they would already be so thin, yeah. so whatever, the models would, but there's still a the problem move. area that would be Or maybe the mestizas, ang laki ng balaka. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So small the waist, so thin the arms, malaki pa rin ang balaka. Yeah. And I said, they're already working so hard. They're already dieting. It just won't move. So then I realized there are stubborn areas of fat. So when I see a patient for lipo, I really get where I need to go. Because I saw so many body types. I taught for 12 years. Yeah. So that was the best, I know, for me. And then, you know, I even go down to the level of teaching my patients how to work out. I will teach them because a lot of people, like, for example, I'll tell them, okay, we took out the fat, but your muscle is flabby. You need to firm up your mouth muscle. muscle. Okay. 
So I tell them, show me how you do sit-ups. And then they'll go like that, yeah. which is basically a neck up. It's not a sit-up. <laughs> it's sit -up. not involved. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. You know, you need to do small crunches. That's what it will do. So then I make them lie down. I make them press my hand to round their back. And then I tell them, it's small. It's not a big. I say, if you start moving your hips, so lot of you sit up, man. You have to really start from the core. From the core, So, uh, yeah. pa yan sa aking liposuction. So, complete. <laughs> complete. Yeah, yeah. complete. Wait, so you mentioned about, you know, like you experienced or saw different body types. I wanted to ask you, what is your definition of beauty back then? Face-wise, it was always the misty sa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I lived in a compound where my neighbors, unfortunately, or fortunately, were the most beautiful women in the Philippines at that time. The Revilla sisters. Yeah. So they the Revilla the sisters are really, they were all the Kamai girls. You know, Marites became one, Cecile became one, I think. But so all the guys were courting them, all the cars are parked outside. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, they're all mestiza, so pretty, so nice, so everything. Even in school, I was very bothered by the fact that the mestiza girls and the pretty girls got everything. Okay, number one, their teacher's pets. Okay. Diba? Number two, they got all the boys. They all courted them. And I said, it's so unfair because they were usually not very nice. They were uh -oh. kind of like mayabang yeah. or feeling like gandang ganda sa sarili. <laughs> and I'm like, ano mong ginawa niya para maging maganda kayo? I mean, really. And then, I had friends who were very, very not so pretty, dowdy, a little chubby, you know, with pimples, with glasses, and nobody would make them pansin, but they were very kind, yeah. very smart. Mm -hmm. So it, I guess the joy in my work is when I can transform mm -hmm. someone who used to be an ugly duckling into someone who's now beautiful. Yeah, or the Because best. it's a perfect balance. The people actually who were not so pretty when they were young, they really develop their personality because it's the only and thing the they can count on. <laughs> and their character is very, yeah. know, and they don't have, any, they're very humble, right? Yeah. And they're really interested in people. Mm -hmm. But they're not so, you know, no, and sometimes you can be narcissistic if you feel you're so beautiful. <laughs> you're so beautiful. <laughs> but then, sila hindi. And then, because my, my pre-med in UP, Diliman, was psychology. Okay. And my last paper that I really got I know, parang it was such a good paper. It's kind of uh, the Pandi published it and whatever. Was how beauty affects people's perception of you. Mm -mm. Diba? So I started with, I based it on a Harvard paper by Nancy Etkoff, a book, and it was called uh, Survival of the Prettiest. So if it was before Survival of the Fittest, the we prettiest. don't need animals, we don't need to kill them, we have refrigerators and what. Ngayon, what is the strength and it's really being good looking mm -hmm. but then of course i say that but i had to prove it and you know they used to accuse all the time magazines tv for pushing this thing that people have to be beautiful it's not true it's instinctive okay it really is so how do i know i started with babies mm -hmm. so six month old babies so at first i get a group of people to analyze several people like how attractive they are on a base case of one to ten where do you rank them? And then these people would go to the crib of yeah. a baby. And I would time how long the baby will look at the person. Okay? And it's so what, clear. What did you find out? The, huh? What did you find if out? If the person's good looking, it's tagal titing ng baby. Ah, okay. But if the person's pangit, they'll look away. <laughs> so it's not... It's yeah. how, no, the six-month-old baby doesn't yeah, know anything, yeah. but it's instinctive. They want to look at people who yeah. are symmetrical, balanced, yeah. harmony, whatever. So I said, okay, so that was the, then I went to the preschool kids. Mm -hmm. So we did mga four-year-olds, diba? Then I got pictures of people and then ranked them according to beauty. Then we made the kids describe the person. Show up for the picture. The kid will look at it. Oh, can you tell me what you think this person is like? If they're pretty, oh my gosh, they're kind, yeah. they're good. The they're gentle. If they're ugly, positive. They're mean. Oh, no. They're whatever. So yeah. it's like, this is so unfair. Yeah. Diba? Okay. Then finally, my last experiment was having people dress the same for a job interview. And the resume of one would say, Manya kum laude, diva. In ganyan ganyan. With this grades, blah, blah. Pero medyo chubby, pimply, 
ganyan. Same, same outfit. Then yung isang girl naman, let's say she's a 2, 2.2, 2.25 or whatever. Pero pretty, sexy. Apply for the same, I mean, similar Position jobs. Or something jobs, the same because yeah. they have to wear the same clothes. Eh? And always, always, the person who was more beautiful would get tired. Would get tired. The okay. other one would sometimes get tired, sometimes not. Mm-hmm. But obviously, men the ano is not enough. Eh? The credentials. So you've mm-hmm. given a person who's a one or a one point five average in UP, and somebody who's a two, which is not naman a three, mm-hmm. so you're okay. They will hire the two because it's they also need presentation. Yeah. And then they had a study where twenty percent good-looking people. Or in twenty percent above the average. The average. So I said, see, it's really unfair. <laughs> it's unfair. So yeah, I'm just equalizing the world. So when people tell me you're so into beauty, you're so shallow, you're so vain, whatever, yeah. I said, no, 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 no. You know what I'm doing? I said I'm equalizing the world. I don't want beauty to be a factor in anything. I want character, industriousness integrity yeah but you know you get blinded by what you see but if everybody's good looking it doesn't matter anymore and so that's really where i'm coming from so i don't know some people agree with me some people are like you shouldn't be like that okay mm-hmm. but you know i deal with reality yeah i'm not a f- i mean the reality of it is based on the studies that yeah. i I did. It's really that good-looking people have an advantage during your formative years. Whenever you look in the mirror, what do you find beautiful about yourself? Honestly, nothing. Really, I was so insecure. Super. Mm-hmm. My teenage years were the worst because my skin was bad. As you mentioned, and I was a little fat. Mm-hmm. And you know, like you know, Filipinos tend to be a bit mean that way. Like when I enter a party, they'll say. Oh, but ang taba mo ngayon. Those unnecessary comments, Parang, right? Nagpaganda ka naman, di ba? <laughs> Nag-makeup naman, nag-ayos yeah. naman ako ng hair. And then, you know, you really just want to turn around and go home. So that I think that was in a way, now I look at it, I never really had self-pity or whatever. Yeah. I was always about, I'm going to fix this. Yeah. You know, this is not going to happen. And my thing is, I always feel if I have a problem, maybe other people have the same the problem. Same thing. Mm-hmm. And maybe they'll come to me. Diba? I mean, I never thought I would be successful like this. It yeah. was just like, worst case scenario, I'll fix myself. My first marriage was Atom Henares. So years ago, I'm sure you guys don't remember, but Ronnie Henares was very famous. And he was like part of the two of us. And, you know, para his wife at that time was Merce Katibayan. Merce was so beautiful. She studied in ISM. And then when she graduated, she left the States. And when I found out he was marrying her, I'm like, that's my, I've only had one girl crush in my life. And that's really Merce. So I said, wow. And they put their pictures in their invitation, which at that time wasn't really done. I I mean, now it's so common. But then I think that was the first invitation that I saw with a picture. And I was so afraid that if I ever got married, they would put it. And yes, it happened because the Henares family is very showbiz. So, They wanted my picture and Atom's picture, but I felt so ugly. So I didn't really want. So it was a major fight. And then, sabi ko, baka hindi na ako kakasal dahil dito. (laughs) So eventually what happened was, um, they put our picture with the NRA side. Yeah. And then in my side, the people I invited, it was a normal invitation. Okay. Because I didn't want people from my side to see. I mean, to show you how insecure I am, if you look at the ISM yearbook of 1974, okay. you will see under Victoria Bello, no picture. Really? No picture. Okay. Because I was too shy to put my picture. That's how insecure I was. I didn't want to have a picture. And it was funny because I think when I was about 21, somebody wanted to give me a date. <laughs> and so they looked at the yearbook to see what I looked like. And there was no picture. Yeah, they couldn't find it. And so the guy said, she must be so ugly because she doesn't have her picture here. <laughs> And then in my debut, I had 500 people in my party, not a single picture. So I don't really have pictures from the age of my 14 till I'm married. To, 22, oh, okay. yeah, wala talaga. Yeah, yeah. That's why I always joke with God because when I finally had my clinic, mm-hmm. I realized I had to do PR. Yeah. And that requires picture taking. Yeah. You know how hard I hard. You made me cover of Mega. You don't know how difficult that is for me because I don't like posing. I don't like pictures, but I know I have to do it. And yeah. I'm, diba, so parang, I feel so weird. But you did it so well. I love you. Thank you. No, I don't. <laughs> so Vicky, when did you feel most beautiful at that time? The honest truth is, yeah. I still don't feel beautiful. I feel better. 
I feel like my skin's better, yeah. my body's better. You know, I don't, I've never said, wow, you're so beautiful. It's not anything. But I think this is the best that I can look already without looking really weird. Because <laughs> I remember I got yeah. a traumatic experience. So fat grafting was a big deal then. Okay. And the, the father of fat grafting was Pierre Fournier. He's a doctor in Paris. And so I went to his clinic and I, I asked him to do it on me. Now, according to them, fat grafting, 50% of the fat dies. It doesn't all take. Because you need to have blood vessels to the fat and whatever. And it doesn't all take. But in my case, 100% of it took. So the 50% did not disappear. So my face became as big as a plate, like double the size of this. And I kept waiting for my fat to disappear and it didn't. So I came home na lang, yeah. and everybody was just so quiet because parang naging medyo, I said, oh my God, I finally did it. Because that's how I get into doctor's offices. Yeah. I do it on myself. Then yeah. while I'm there, I make one that, you know, I'm a dermatologist mm, in the Philippines. Philippines or yeah. I would love to learn what you do. Choo, choo, choo. And then because I'm... From a third world country, I'm not I'm not a threat or anything. They teach me. But I remember coming out on ABS, I had an interview, and the director had to come down and say, What happened to your face? So eventually, after a year, I had to liposuction my face. After that, the fat thing? didn't wouldn't go away. So, I see. so now I'm very careful what I'm gonna do. Because I I'm always like I I see not from Bello, huh, from other clinics. I I see who patients who I feel are overdone yeah. or look so fake mm-hmm. or diba and it's yeah. not nice even yeah. if their faces are so tight but it's not so I don't want to look like that so I for me when I look at myself I go yeah I think I look you know for 66 I I feel I look younger and you know for me because beauty is not all about the face it's, yeah it's, it's just that that was my insecurity so I had to fix it yeah but you were focused on me, that beauty yeah. is like it's a whole package. Mm-hmm. Um, physically, of course, nice body. But more than that, passion. Because I think I've been around long enough, 33 years, to yeah. meet so many beautiful people, physically beautiful people who have no passion for life, who don't care about anybody else, who are so egocentric and any little thing, it's all about them. But I feel like you're not beautiful at all. After you talk to them, maybe for an hour, they have no conversation. They don't contribute to the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that you say that. But like, I like what you said that, you know, like it's the best version of yourself. Exactly. Right now, yeah. That's right? always what we say. Yeah. I think more than anything, the reason I feel good nowadays is I'm so comfortable in my body. Yeah. Because I always tell people, you know, that's only your earth suit. Actually, for me, the, lo- I, the way I look at it, like fashion, I'm decorating your body or I'm fixing it. If your dress doesn't fit right, let's make it fit right. If your body doesn't fit right, let's make it. But you know, it's a soul that's inside the person. Mm -hmm. Agree. In the end, right, this is just your physical earth suit. You cannot live on earth if you don't have the suit. But you know, it's you have to see it. When you do a facelift or something and you lift the face, everybody looks the same under you. (laughs) (laughs) It drives home the point. It's all superficial. Even though you were a pioneer at that time, it was also challenging for you. It's always, when right? you're the first, it's challenging. Yeah. You can't be a pioneer because I guess, by definition. Uh-huh. Could you maybe name some of the challenges that, that well, you faced? There are phases of challenges. So when I started, everybody, first of all, I did PR, mm-hmm. um, which I don't think any clinic was doing at that time. And I, you know, I at that time they were saying, oh, you can't advertise, but you can but PR is not advertising. First of all, you don't pay for it. Second, need. I just wanted to really educate people, people. about the new things because I was the first person to bring lasers to the Philippines. Mm-hmm. We were the first people to bring Botox, fillers, you know, all these machines. So I needed to tell people what it was about. And so that's why, and magazines and newspapers need content. So, and I'm so model dad, so it's easy for me to translate scientific terms into more layman terms. So but I was quite popular in that department. But then I got the I got so much thrown at me from other doctors, okay. other dermatologists that they're saying, why is she doing lasers? You know, they would tell my patients she will burn your brain. And then why is she doing Botox? She will kill you. That's a poison. Mm-hmm. You know, and I look back at those days and I was like so frustrated because why are they so close minded? This is the way dermatology is going to be but all i got well, was, was, was smear campaign, campaign, right? something like that yeah. so i would really feel so bad but then i prayed i'm very prayerful that's one thing 
you know, I think being an only child, my best friend's really the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ because I'm alone in my room. Jesus, what do I do? Anyway, so I said, Lord, am I really doing something wrong? Because yeah. I feel like not. Mm -hmm. But because of all the people ganging up on me, parang baka naman, I'm wrong. I said, I need to have a sign from you to tell me if I should stop mm -hmm. this PR because that was their main thing. Like, you shouldn't be doing that. So the very next day, I got a patient. She was so pretty. She was 19 years old. Perfect skin. I said, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> And she said, she lifts up her her sleeve and she shows me this keloid. Okay. That's as big as a tennis ball. Okay. And I said, oh my God, what happened to you? And she said, you know, I had an angel on my shoulder, not tattoo. And then USC would not let me enroll if I have a tattoo. So I had to take it out. Okay. So I went to a dermatologist who dermabraided my tattoo the area. off. Yeah. And then it became a keloid. And then she said, I heard you have a laser that can remove my tattoo. So I was wondering if you can help me. I said, yes, I have a laser to remove your tattoo, but that's not a tattoo. That's a keloid. And I don't have a laser to remove a keloid, keloid at that time. Now we have only five years ago. But, you know, I said, I can't do anything for you. And she goes, Sana, you came to me to remove the tattoo. She goes, I didn't know about you until this happened. Uh -huh. So I said, see? If I'm more maingay, then more people more will people know me. Will know. Na lang. And then I said, Lord, is this your sign? Mm -hmm. And the, to continue. he didn't answer. No. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> so I said, I need another sign. Yeah. Parang kulang pa yon. So I said, Lord, please, one more sign. Because, yeah. you know, I, it's really more like a war that I was getting into. Mm -hmm. So about three days later, a baby came in. One year old, one and a half. So cute on one side, but the other side was so deformed. Oh, okay. And I said, what happened to this baby? Then the you could see that the there was a flap, a neck flap from the neck to the face, and the eyes were it was so bad. And I said, What happened? He goes, Cause this one man had a hemanjoma. A hemanjoma is a blood vessel tumor. And because it's blood vessels, it keeps getting bigger. I was on the eye, so the eye closed, so they were, the baby was getting blind. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So they were worried, so they have to remove the hemanjoma. No, there's a laser for that. It's a blood vessel laser. So it shrinks all the blood vessels till it shrinks to nothing. Mm -hmm. And there's no scar or anything. But again, they went to a plastic surgeon. And the plastic surgeon had never heard of lasers before. Before, okay. They didn't know about it. So the plastic surgeon did the best he could do, which is what he used to do before lasers came. And that was to remove the whole tumor. Yeah. There's a big defect now. Uh -huh. Get skin from the neck, put and it on graph. the face. Yeah. And then now it's all deformed. Yeah. And I'm like, same reason. Like, why didn't you come to me before I have the laser? They go, I only heard about you when this happened. So I said, okay, I exist. I think I had to look at it and say, I exist for my patients. I do not exist for other doctors. Yeah. My bosses, I, the reason for my existence is my patients to make their lives better. So I will just go through. So I, I imagine myself with blinders like a horse and I really would never look to the right or yeah. left of me. Sige lang, go and go, go and go, keep we'll trying for it, and be 100%. of service, yeah. you know, to people. And I think that's, you know, it went on like that for about 15 years. It took them about 15 years to catch up. To catch up. That's because before that, they would, I, I didn't know how lucky I was. Monopoly. I was yeah. alone. Yeah. Now naman, after putting me down for so long, they're all copying me naman. <laughs> Pee, what do I do? <laughs> so I said, you apologize to me naman to me. Because in my mind, I want to go to sarili ko. Because I really, yeah. you know, it was very painful for me to to be always criticized. And yeah. so many rumors told about me that are untrue yeah. or that I killed. I never, ever harmed the patient. Wala talaga. So why are you guys doing Do this? That. And I never thought in medicine it would be like, like that. that. Yeah. So it was kind of a shock to me. Now naman, wala. Now there's so much competition. They're all coffee. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, I guess the trick there is to just continue to to go forward and really innovate and yeah. be the first in everything. In so, everything. Yeah, that's what we tried to do at Bello. Vicky, I wanted to ask you also, who were your first celebrity clients that made an impact on your career? Um, that's 33 so, years. Huh? Again, so you can choose. People <laughs> say, because really Bello started this whole thank you, Dr. Vicky Bello stuff. Yeah, I but remember But again, that. it's not a planned thing. I was okay. really serendipity. So what happened was, Ronnie Hanares was a manager of Regine Velasquez. Regina had a problem. She had pimples on her back. Her okay. skin, face-wise, was very clear. But she had pimples on her back. No doctor at that time could heal, could fix right? It. Okay. And then so, and it was frustrating her because when she has concerts, she has to wear backless. Yes. Yeah. 
So my brother, ex brother in law, he said, "Why don't I bring you to my sister in law? She just came back from the states. She has so many modern things. Baka naman she can fix it." So he brought her to me, and I applied something so radical <laughs> that you'll laugh. Glycolic acid. Okay. Okay. So nobody yeah. had heard of alpha hydroxy acid. That, okay. that was really in um yeah that was when did I start? Nineteen ninety nineteen ninety one. So she comes and then. I applied and I dried it up, and she was so grateful. She went on TV. I, I don't said, know what show, and she said, "Thank you, Doctor Vicky Bella, for fixing my back." Okay. So at that time, the hottest star was Pops Fernandez. So Pops and Martin were hot then. So Pops went to Regine's. Goes, where do you go? She was Doctor Bella. She just arrived. Ganyan, ganyan. <laughs> so Pops went. Then suddenly all the showbiz people went. Started going. And then to you. the thank you, thank you. See that's a TV. On TV. And then big lang nagit si kata ako, right? Yeah. I mean, parang who's Doctor Bella? She's yeah. new. Blah. I said, wow, that's a nice way pala to market because it didn't cost me anything. The celebrities, basically. yeah. And, you know, I didn't charge Pops. I mean, I didn't charge Regine because she's the talent of ano uh, of Ronnie. Ronnie but I just made anak and anak and anak but I was still kind of A you know like mm. I'm the secret of the rich and famous yeah. who will not talk You're about a. it because we're and then the stars would say my name but I wasn't ano pa I a wasn't, household name it wasn't a household name until but, until in 2000 so when did I get super sika <laughs> yeah bang ano super sika <laughs> But I got sick eight was the years after. Moment? The defining yeah. moment is thank you, Rosanna Rosses. Oh. So Rosanna Rosses was a big star then. Oh. And she came to my clinic. It was so funny. She wanted to have a lipo. But she wasn't talking. She was just staring at me and not talking. Okay. And then I said, because in the States, when I do the tumescent liposuction, people are awake. Because it's not painful. Mm. Normally... But here in the Philippines, people, the sight of a needle, they just want to So, yeah, okay, fine. Scared. Let them see. So I was asking her, do you want it awake or asleep? Because you have a choice. And she, she just stared at me. I said, awake? Better, but I can stand you up. Because mm. it's nice to lie for someone awake. Uh. Because you can stand them up and lie for them while they're standing. But if you're lying down and sleeping, I have to guess what you're going to look like when you're standing. Yeah. Right? But of course, experience, you can do that. But it's still nice. For me. Anyway, so I did her. She never spoke a word the whole time. The whole and time. I didn't really know where she was. But she's a big star. And she was on Star Talk. And then she, so we live with her on a Wednesday, Saturday, in Shonya. She went with her girdle. She took up her skirt. She showed her girdle. She saw, showed her pasa pasa. She showed, and nagpa live pasa, alam mo, ang mahal yun, pero nagbay da ko. Yeah. And she made it really yeah. something to be proud of, mm-hmm. to have a live mm-hmm. And from then on, yan, everybody knew it. my name. It was yeah. all over the place. So I think I really have to give it to her that. Mm-hmm. To may become a household name. Yeah. And luckily for me, I guess Bello is a nice name. Bello <laughs> means beautiful, mm-hmm. by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, it means handsome. Okay. But in Portugal, it means... Uh, no. In Portuguese. Yeah, Portuguese, it's Belo Horizonte, beautiful horizon. Oh. So I was meant to be a Bello do- uh, beauty, <laughs> beauty doctor. Yeah. My name. Oh. Diba? It's already there. Then yeah. became a verb, have a Bello beautiful day, magpabelo ka. Yeah. And daming ano. So mm-hmm. na, I mean, I think my name also helps a lot. Vicky, I wanted to ask you, what are your golden rules? Of a rules, ba? Or one rule? You can have, have My rules number one, one rule, rule and the yeah. reason Bello Essentials, diba, we're number one in sun care or sunscreen. And the reason is I really believe, on, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. cure. Yeah. And in my 33 years of experience, I have seen people age prematurely, grabe, because of the sun. Sun damage. So especially these golfers, mm-hmm. these runners. Yeah. So, and for me, the number one beauty cream, if you ask me, it should be sunscreen. Every okay. day, you protect yourself yeah. already. And it starts early. You know, people have the misconception if you're a child, you can go out in the sun, no sunscreen. But no. <laughs> the way the body works, the DNA in our body gets corrupted by sun. And in the beginning, when you're young, it doesn't show, so you look fine. That's why, if you notice in the U.S., 18-year-olds are so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. By the time they reach 30, because of the bikinis and the sun exposure, they look a lot older Yeah, they look a lot older. So I would say, number one, use sunscreen every day, especially now, because we're always with our phone. There's blue light Mm -hmm. with our computer. Yeah. That sun exposure. So even if you're cooking... Even if you're just in the house and in the, in the office, you yeah. have to use sunscreen. And if there's any cream that you have to start using, my best friend is tretinoin. Tretinoin. Or retinol. Okay. So a tretinoin, you do a 0.05%. Mm-hmm. Retinol would be 05 to 1%. Yeah. Because it's milder. 
But you know, when you're younger, you do it for pimples. Yeah. You do it for you know. When you get into your 25, you start getting pigmentation, melasma, spots. Yeah. It's also good for that. And then when you're above 35 and 40, you're aging now. It's really good for good collagen point. formation, wrinkles, fine lines. So all your life, the one cream you have to have Wonder all drug. the time is vitamin A and yeah. retinol or mix. You can mix that together. Yes. Okay. okay. Vicky, as somebody who's been in the industry for 33 years, how do you stay relevant? That's yeah. hard huh, to do. Talaga. I don't need, <laughs> I'm always relevant. Okay, I like that. <laughs> I always manage to get myself somehow, somewhere. I don't try. <laughs> I honestly don't try. Because, you know, I really realized I one of my, the gurus I listen to is Simon Sinek. Do you know mm-hmm. him? One of the things he, he said that really impacted me is, okay, I always had purpose in my life. I don't think I could live without purpose. I always teach Scarlett and my children, what are you contributing? Mm-hmm. Why are you here? Yeah. I mean, other, if you don't know why you're here, it's not to have a good time, huh? <laughs> of course, you should have a good time. Yeah. You should be happy. It's fine to shop, whatever. But in the what end, you purpose? have to contribute to humanity, right? Yeah. Especially to the Philippines. I really want to do that. So parang it's not a problem with me to be relevant because I'm always trying to keep going forward. Mm-hmm. I'm really, I think, more a futurist person. I don't like, I'm not, parang gusto ko bago. Yeah. I have to do something, yeah. be different. Mm-hmm. You know, that sort of thing. So, I don't know, but sometimes I'm too relevant. <laughs> Hayden and I have a problem when we started dating. I yeah. said, you know, Hayden, I always become controversial and I'm not trying to be yeah, or anything. Yeah, why do you think that? And then he <laughs> also gets controversial. No, so I said, okay. I don't know if together, but it will get worse. <laughs> no, yeah. but I'm, um, you know, parang it's a, there is no end to this game. Because mm-hmm. I used to think, win the battles, then you win the war. Yeah. But who am I fighting? And who, I, who am I competing with? I don't really think like that anymore. So for me, um, being here, it's it's an infinite game. There's no end to it. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I will be able to continue Bello until well, Crystal or Hayden's really taking over now. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully, Scarlett will become a doctor. I don't know. But yeah. I don't have an end in mind. And I don't have short goals in mind. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't really like to, I, if I make gimmick, it's because I want to be fun, but not because I want to be relevant or yeah. whatever. Well, TikTok, I'm so happy I'm relevant to the kids. They know <laughs> me because of yeah. my TikTok. When I go abroad, I'm relevant because of YouTube. I only started these things over the pandemic because okay. I had nothing to do. Okay. So why don't we try YouTube, podcast? Mm-hmm. I flopped in podcast. That's why. Congrats <laughs> to you. But TikTok, I'm video girl. Eh? And yeah. I like to dance. Yeah. I mean, and I love to dance. I'll never dance in front of anyone, but I'll dance in front of the camera for TikTok. But for I TikTok. don't know you people. Yeah. It's okay. Mm-hmm. If you bash me, I don't know you. Of course, we are at the time and age that diversity in beauty is celebrated, right? And then we've witnessed its evolution. How do you think Bello has adapted over the years? Okay, so I exist for you to be happy and secure and confident. That's what mm-hmm. happened to me. Mm-hmm. When I started to have better skin, when I wasn't fat, when whatever, it helped me. I really applaud. I honestly, sincerely applaud people who are so confident that it doesn't matter to them how they look. I mean, if, there's, if they're a little overweight, they accept it. That's great. I love it. Or people who have bad skin or they're pre you have scars. I see a lot of people actually like that. And I really wonder, and I'm, I really admire because I wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. So I only created Bella for people who, if you fix something, they feel better. Like, you know, liposuction for me is the best psychotherapy because when I see them come to the clinic, yeah. in the beginning, they're wearing baggy clothes. You're yeah. kind of looking down. Yeah. They're not looking at me. Mm-hmm. And when we lie with them, because you remove so much fat, but in the next time they come, there's a fit fit now. And then, the way As the months go also, by, they're so much more confident mm-hmm. and they're happy. They're not hiding. They don't feel shy anymore. Their mm-hmm. self-consciousness is gone. But I feel Bello is just there. I just exist for people who need me. I never shame people and just think, hey, you need that or you. Because it's not true anymore. And I really love the fact that now people are happy with themselves yeah. and how they look mm-hmm. and not. But I really wish other people wouldn't judge people who are not well. like that. Yeah. So I yeah. feel like it's kind of unfair Yeah, because we applaud you for... Loving yourself the way you are, but, but you shouldn't. Yeah, parang naman don't judge people who somehow have a problem, di ba? Mm-hmm. That they shouldn't do that, yeah. that they shouldn't have things fixed. Because whatever makes a person more confident and be the best version of themselves should be allowed. Precisely. And not so you're more like pro-choice. Yeah, as I said, I always say, <laughs> um, 
what you look like at 20 yeah. is a gift from God. Mm-hmm. It's genetic. Yeah. Luck. In the lotto, you won. <laughs> yeah. What you look like at 40 is your gift to yourself. Yeah. It doesn't have to be bello. Mm-hmm. It can be working out all the time. Yeah. Eating healthy food. Fruits and Taking vegetables care of your body. And, yeah. and protein and meat. I really believe you need that. And that's your taking care of yourself, self-care. And that should really be applauded. Vicky, you are known to be direct. What about does it the, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honest or maybe direct about the treatments people should get. How do you discern which treatment will be beneficial to your clients? Like today, Camille Po, I can say that because she's very open about what she does. But she came to the clinic, so she goes there maybe once every six months. So we did threads on her nose, we did the lips, and then I noticed her face. Lips. For me, for mm-hmm. me. It's a bit flat. I like the egg here. I like the little egg. Just a little one. But she likes it like that. Oh, okay. So I said, Camille, are you, does this bother you? Does, do, would you like a little more cheap? Uh-huh. Um, well, although you're fine. She goes, parang okay naman. I said, okay, if it doesn't bother you, whatever yeah, you're fine. comfortable with. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, who's to say naman that I'm really right that yeah. if she had a little egg, <laughs> diba? it yeah. would look a little better. But some people yeah. like that. Some mm-hmm. people don't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. She goes, so we're fine with that. So, yeah, and that's how I, you, so I'm very honest yeah. and I tell them what I think. Mm-hmm. And then I ask, I ask them first. Yeah. The thing that people miss most of the time is the chin. The chin. They okay. always don't see the chin. Mm-hmm. That's the one I will almost always point out because they're all, you know, but Connected. now there's so much because of Zoom and everything. Yeah. You need, you need your chin. Most, to be as- most Asians don't have much of a chin. It's very rare. And it's inside. And it adds so much to the beauty because it's one third, one third, yeah, one, third. one third. Normally, the one third is cool. So mm-hmm. then I'll say, just put a little chin. It, yeah. will, it really makes a big difference, a difference. in a small yeah. one. So, yeah. yeah, those are the things. I think this is where experience is so important. Mm-hmm. And that's why I feel I'm still relevant. <laughs> I like that it's a co- collaboration. Yeah, it has And you're to just be. being like, I feel like you manage their expectations as Always well. Always under promise. Yeah. Over deliver. That's what you... <laughs> so... For listeners out there, Vicky, who are also interested in setting up their own business, what should they expect? And maybe what are the tips that you can give to them to be successful? <laughs> so I think, you no, know, you know, I was talking to Crystal because she wants to put up a business mm-hmm. that I'm not really for. Okay. Because it's a common business. Mm-hmm. For me, you always have to look for, first of all, you have to love it. Secondly, try of the things you love. How can you make money? I'm always doing that. It's backward. I love something. I'm going to figure out how to make money doing it. And then I think you need to have a unique selling proposition. You can't go in and be just like everyone. Like I'm feeling it now. I, I was unique when I started. Uh-huh. Now everybody's doing it. There's so many beauty clinics. They're all the same. But I'm having a hard time. Like what's next for me? How, you know, so this with her, I said, Crystal, you know, but you're just being another one. Mm-hmm. I, I, I never brought you up to be like just that. another one. I never feel I work a day in my life because That's I love great. what I do. And even at night, if I'm thinking about it and I can't sleep, I'm still happy because I love what I do. If you don't love what you do, then you're working. And you know, life is too short to suffer like that, right? Agree. So now, Vicky, since there's a lot of competitors in the market, which you mentioned a while ago, what continues to set Bello apart from the others? And what's next for Vicky Bell? For Vicky Bell. <laughs> what continues to set us apart? I think even to this day, we're yeah. still the, you know, we lead, others follow. Okay. Right? Yeah, but okay. it's true. Mm-hmm. So in the last, in the last three years, two years, we've, we've introduced exosomes. Yeah. We've introduced Advilite, the first laser for acne. It's really wonderful. Redness, um, oiliness. We have Virtue RF, which is wonderful. So, you know, everything, you combine everything, the treatments are still there. And we continue to innovate. I'll never stop because that's what I enjoy doing. I really assign myself the R&D role because I can teach other people to do the actual procedure. Yeah. But the R&D, parang, I have a nose for it. I have a feel for it. So that's what we're going to continue. Of course, I really put a Bella Medical Group for me. Okay. So bait, bottom line is I really I specialized in acne because I had a lot of acne yeah. specialized in pimples because I had a lot of pimples I had varicose veins so I specialized on that and then fat liposuction because I'm fat so everything so now where do I go I'm 66 I want to live a vibrant happy healthy life so we're doing the wellness we're doing biohacking okay so that's where Bello is going to go also of course we want Bello to be a world brand mm-hmm. um, I always say I want 
World Domination by Bello. It's mm-hmm. a bit late for me, but I'm going to start that part. So we're opening branches. Dubai has been a thing. And Bello Essentials, but it's easier for a lot to do it with products. Yeah. My passion is eye cream uh-huh. because I haven't found a really good eye cream in spite of, I use all the top brands. I I buy La Mer, La Prairie, mm-hmm. uh, Dior, whatever. Yeah. But apparently, because yeah. people are concentrating on the moisturization of the eye, has not no the, no. oil glands. Yeah. But what they don't understand is if you use hyaluronic acid around the eye, it will absorb 10,000 times its weight in water. So you become puffy when you yeah. wake up in the morning, you'll see every time I use the hyaluronic, the main ingredient, I look like a eye bags. And as the day progresses, it goes down. So I told my people, we're not going that direction. We're going amino acids. We're doing peptides. We're doing something for the color because people sleep so late. So finally, I have my most beautiful eye cream ever I have found. And it's Velo Essentials. And it can be incorporated Amazing. in any line. So we're launching it next year. Now I'm sure they'll get mad at me for announcing. But, you know, <laughs> for me, it's like, finally, I have to create my own eye cream because I don't have to do it. Our number one selling product are sunscreens. Because see, it started also. I don't like any sunscreen. Yeah. I keep telling everyone, wear sunscreen. Did I wear? No. Why? It makes me oily. I break out. So I told them, Matt, you have to make me a matte sunscreen. I don't like chemicals. You have to make me zinc oxide, but it has to be fine, like makeup. So I don't see the chalky the, white appear. Yeah, the white. So it's so nice cast. to have your own R&D. It's so yeah. nice to go there and tell them, okay, my magic pharm- pharmacist, pharmacologist, inventors, please give me this. And then in a year, they, with all the testing and whatever, I have the product I want. And then, yeah, and I'm sure many people will need it as well. Thank you so much, Vicky, for guesting in our podcast today. Thank you for having me, PV. Such an honor and a pleasure. I hope Since you had I fun. my mega magazine so much. Oh, thank you. We also wanted to give you flowers yeah, from flowers. Ginger Flowers. Thank you. Thank you, Mega. Thank you, Ginger Flowers. <laughs> Before we end, Vicky, I wanted to ask you, Vicky, what is your next move? Make it big, make it mega. Thank you so much, Vicky. I hope you enjoyed today. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Next Move. This has been your host, P.V. Reyes Isidro. If you enjoyed our conversation and want more updates, subscribe to the Mega Channel. Bye, everyone.